Now that we have an array of missiles at the ready, let's set up the input code so that the player can launch one of these missiles every time they press the A button on their Xbox 360 controller or space on the keyboard. We'll need a few variables to do this, so let's head up to the top of Game1.cs and declare them. Just below where you declared your array of missiles, add the following code. Gamepad state, previous state. Pound if, exclamation mark, Xbox. Keyboard state, previous keyboard state. Pound and if. These are the gamepad state and keyboard state objects that will represent the previous input state, that is, the state of the controller and keyboard from the last call to update. We need to hold on to these to be able to tell if the player has just pressed the A button on the controller or space on the keyboard, so we can launch a missile. If we didn't have this previous state information, all we could tell is if the player was holding down the button and then they'd be able to fire all their missiles just by holding down the A button. Let's add the input code and make use of these previous states. Find the update method. Go down to the bottom of the update call, just below where you made the call to clamp the rotations of the missile launcher head. Add this code. If gamepad state dot buttons dot A equals equals button state dot pressed ampersand ampersand previous state dot buttons dot a equals equals button state dot released fire missile this code checks the current state of the controller to see if the player is holding the a button but the double ampersand means for this if statement to be true the additional check to the right of the ampersands must be true as well. This is a logical AND operator. The second check is to the previous state of the controller, so the state of the controller on the previous call to update. In that state, the A button must be released, which means that the user has just pressed A this frame after it had been released last frame. If that set of conditions is true, then we fire a missile. This keeps the player from firing all their missiles by just holding down the A button. They must press and release the button, one missile per press. For a better understanding about why this works, see the more details for this step. There, you can see the benefit of storing a previous state. We must also add the keyboard version of this conditional, so add the following code. Pound if, exclamation mark, Xbox. If keyboard state dot is key down keys dot space ampersand ampersand previous keyboard state dot is key up keys dot space fire missile. Pound and if. As before, we enclose this in an exclamation mark Xbox conditional so that the keyboard code doesn't show up in the Xbox version of the game. The logic is the same. If this update they're pressing space, but last call they weren't, then they must have just pressed it, so fire a missile. Finally, we need to have some code that updates the previous gamepad state and keyboard state structures. It should be at the end of the update call after we've done everything we need to do with the current state. So just after the keyboard code you added, add the following. Previous state equals gamepad state. Pound if, exclamation mark, Xbox. Previous keyboard state equals keyboard state. Pound and if. This sets the previous state equal to the values in the current state and we'll be ready for the next call to update. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that we're calling a method called fire missile. You've also noticed that a method called fire missile doesn't exist yet. That's our next step, to create the fire missile method. If you'd like more information about storing previous input states and why it's useful, click more details for this step. 
Otherwise, move on to the next step when you're ready.